tuning in to the Soybean Podcast by the Arkansas Soybean Promotion Board. Today with Dr. Burt Bloom, Professor of Plant Pathology, University of Arkansas Division of Ag. This is a phase two of a project you've been working on. Get us up to speed. Yeah, so this uh, project is focused broadly on finding uh, bioherbicides that target pigweed or palmer amaranth. Uh, pigweed has this ability to kind of evade a lot of different control strategies. And so we've been looking at ways to use a more bio-based approach. And so we've been harnessing natural pathogens of pigweed and basically kind of weaponizing these to where they're able to specifically target pigweed and uh, have a lot more effect than some of the chemistries that are out there right now. And so in phase one, uh, this is a very new sort of approach, a very kind of you know, fundamentally different direction than what a lot of uh, groups have taken. And so we were you know, collecting the pieces. We, we had a large collection of isolates, traveled all over Arkansas into some neighboring states, uh, generated a large number of pathogens uh, from pigweed, and then screened and surveyed these for kind of the ones that looked the most promising. And in phase two, uh, although we're always still collecting pathogens, you never know when, when something amazing will pop out, but uh, we've kind of gotten to the point now where uh, we're focused in on a, on a smaller group and we're uh, kind of adjusting, you could say, their virulence or their ability to cause disease so that we can use them as bioherbicides. you kind of taken a play out of the entomology playbook where they've introduced these viruses into different pests and really had a, an effect avoiding some chemistry treatments, right? Yeah, it's kind of analogous to that where if we have, uh, so pigweed, the traits that make it such a, an aggressive weed, some of those are advantageous for us. And you know, most plants have evolved with pathogens to where uh, pathogens exist and they, they pull nutrients from populations of plants, but they don't kill them. Uh, the best pathogen doesn't necessarily completely devastate its host population. It lives with it and takes resources from it. And uh, while a lot of pigweed pathogens do that as well, uh, pigweed has, has spread so quickly out of its natural kind of habitat into the, the agronomic context that it doesn't have as good a baseline resistance to a lot of these pathogens. And we're able to, with, with uh, modern techniques and genetics, uh, further kind of weaponize these pathogens. Really affecting and exploiting a pathogen that would really help control Palmer amaranth without the treatment pressure, which leads to the resistance problems that we're having. So in other words, uh, over time, uh, growers wouldn't need to reapply annually or every other year. And in some cases, uh, we, we, we don't know. So we, we may see that the periodic reapplication is necessary. Uh, some of the traits that make pathogens stable as we change those and make them more aggressive, it may influence their ability to overwinter or to spread or to sporulate. So there, there will be some trade-offs and we're, we're actually, that is the phase of the project that we're in right now. You know, from as we see in this lab into the, into the greenhouse, you're having to, to follow this thing. W what does the project look like from start to finish? Yeah, that's a great question. So kind of in the earlier phase, when we, we you know, we're very heavily invested in collecting pathogens and going through that initial phase of screening. Most of that was done in the greenhouse. And so we have a variety of different techniques to uh, inoculate populations of pigweed with individual pathogens and then just assess how you know, virulent they are. A tool that we can use uh, is genome editing. And so this is a non-transgenic way to go into the genomes of these pathogens and we can alter genes. Say there's a gene that's holding back virulence. Mm -hmm. We can go in and delete that gene non-transgenically. And so then to ramp up that, the, the ability of that pathogen to target pigweed. And of course, you know, as part of that process, we always have to vet these pathogens. Uh, some pathogens are not very host specific. So we certainly, we, we immediately discard uh, anything that would say be virulent on soybean or any other plant. Uh, a lot of these pathogens are very host specific. And so they're they're completely uninterested in soil. So speaking of application, how would you, when this does prove to be a solution, how will it be introduced into a population or into a, just specifically a field? So the University of Arkansas, uh, some decades ago, actually released the first bioherbicide that was approved in, in the world called a product called, called Coliga, and uh, that product in, in a slightly different form is still active and produced today. 
And so that could be flown over a field. That, there's different ways. It could be probably you know, running through center pivots, uh, different ways to apply that directly. And so then that basically lets the pathogen take off and do its thing. The other way that we're looking at, one of the, the isolates that we are, are very interested in appears to produce a host-specific toxin that kills pigweed. And so in this case, that could be an entirely new chemistry of bioherbicides. That so, would be cool. Yeah, so that's, we're very excited about that one. Yeah, so it's, it looks very promising so far. In order for this project to proceed, uh, it requires a, a blend of a wide range of research techniques. So you get the best of both worlds. Yeah, that's so the idea. You get a little inside and a little bit of outside. Yeah, and, it, and it's good training for the students too. So that's, and so it's really kind of a unique uh, funding opportunity and we're incredibly grateful for the support. Well, that's a very interesting project. Um, keep us posted on it. We'll follow back up with you later. Uh, thanks for your time today. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Arkansas Soybean Promotion Board's Soybean Podcast. We hope you'll follow us on Twitter at Arkansas Soybean and even more resources at themiraclebean.com. <laughs>